Hello, my dear viewer, you are welcome again to this episode of my videos. Well, in this particular one, I will explain how to properly add a consumer's installation in a TT earthing arrangement. But very importantly, if you have not yet watched my video on types of earthing systems, you can find a link to that video under this very video. You actually need to watch that video because it will help you to understand this aspect properly. All right, so in a TT earthing arrangement, all metal parts of the consumer's installation must be properly connected to the general mass of earth by means of an earth electrode. So why at all do we have to bury that earth electrode in the earth? Right. The reason for doing that is to provide a low resistance path for fault currents that may occur between life and any metal part in that installation to flow to the general mass of the earth freely. Okay, take note. In the TT system, the earth fault loop path includes the earth, and that is why care must be taken to ensure that the earth electrode is properly connected to the earth so that the impedance of the F fault loop path will be very low. An F fault loop path is the closed circuit that a fault current takes when there is a connection between a live conductor and earth. And in a TT system, the earth now becomes part of that path. Now, for protective devices such as RCDs to operate effectively during an F fault, this path must allow a substantial amount of the fault current to flow back to the supply source. Okay, and so if this path is not able to complete, then it means whatever protective devices you have in your circuit will not operate, including some RCDs. So we have to make sure that the resistance of this part is as low as possible to allow a substantial amount of the fault current that will happen between life and earth to flow back. And this is why it is very important to do your earthing effectively. All right, so how can we achieve this low resistance path for the air faults that may occur in the wiring? Does it mean we have to use a very long rod? Using very long rods may mean we have to dig very deep. So how deep do we have to dig? And how long should the earth rod be? All right, here, before I go ahead, I must say that there are different types of earthen electrodes and there are different methods of earthen. And so the best type of earth electrode for a particular application will depend on a number of factors such as the soil conditions, the size and type of electrical system, and of course, the budget. So it is always best to consult with a qualified electrician to determine the best type of electrode for your specific needs. However, in most installations, the type of earth electrode used is the copper rod. So I will be using the copper rod as an example in this video. Copper rod because it offers very low resistance to the flow of current. And again, before I move on, let's look at the materials needed for earthing in case we are using the copper rod. First, we will need an earth electrode generally referred to as an earth rod. Then we will also need an inspection chamber or simply called earth chamber. Then we will also need an earth rod clamp. And then sometimes, depending on the soil properties, an earth enhancing compound may be needed to reduce soil resistivity. And of course, we may also need digging tools depending on how deep we will have to dig. All right. So coming back to our question of how deep should we dig and how long should a rod be, the length of your rod will actually depend on a lot of factors. For example, if you have to bury your earth in a rocky area or in a rocky soil, you may have to dig deeper 
So basically, this is how it works. There are areas where the water table is very high, or in other words, the water table is closer to the Earth's surface. In such areas, you may not need a longer rod. For instance, there are places where even in the dry season, the water table is as low as three feet down from the surface of the ground. And in such areas, a copper rod of just four feet long will be okay for a perfect earthing arrangement. And in such situations, you can drive the rod directly into the ground without necessarily digging. Okay, on the other hand, in areas where the moisture content of the soil is very low, such as rocky and sandy areas, or where the water table is very low, you may have to dig deeper until you get to a level where the soil is consistently moist. All right. Notwithstanding the scenarios given above, it is always recommended to comply with the local electrical codes for earthing in your area. Good. But then when it comes to earthing, you can use as long rod as you wish. If you are using a shorter rod in an area where the water table is very low, then you may be doing a wrong work. But even if you have an area where the water table is very high, and then you decide to use a very long rod, it doesn't still spoil anything. All right, so now, what if for some good reasons, I cannot drive the rod deep enough into the ground and the electric resistance to earth is high? If for some good reason you cannot bury a longer rod, one way to reduce the electric resistance to earth is to bury multiple rods in parallel with the main rod. So, in simple terms, proper earthing simply means providing a very low resistance path for fault currents that may occur between life and earth to flow to earth. And then, in connecting your earthing conductor to the earth electrode, you must use earth clamps for the connection because that provides for a good connection between the earthing conductor and the earth electrode. And as I said earlier, the effort loop path must have a very low resistance and that includes the resistance at the termination of the earth electrode. And then also for proper earthing, you must provide an earth inspection chamber because there are times that depending on the chemical composition of the particular soil, your earth rod may get deteriorated over time. So with the earth inspection chamber, you can inspect your earthing system from time to time and to carry out tests to be able to know at all times that your earthing system is still working perfectly. The topic on proper earthing is very broad. There are a lot of things that still need to be talked about. But for this video, I will end here and then continue with other aspects in other videos. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please, if you have any question to ask, you can leave it at the comment section. And if you like what you have just watched, kindly give a thumb up, share, and subscribe in case you have not done that yet to stay connected. Thank you very much. See you in my next video.